October 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 36 and 37 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah in the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was ruling over Judah. Get a scroll. Write on it everything I have told you to say about Israel, Judah, and all the other nations since I began to speak to you in the reign of Josiah until now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about all the disasters I intend to bring on them, they will stop doing the evil things they have been doing. If they do, I will forgive their sins and the wicked things they have done. So Jeremiah summoned Barak, son of Neriah. Then Jeremiah dictated to Barak everything the Lord had told him to say, and Barak wrote it all down in a scroll. Then Jeremiah told Barak, I am no longer allowed to go into the Lord's temple. So you go there the next time all the people of Judah come in from their towns to fast in the Lord's temple. Read out loud where all of them can hear you what I told you the Lord said, which you wrote in the scroll. Perhaps then they will ask the Lord for mercy and will all stop doing the evil things they have been doing. For the Lord has threatened to bring great anger and wrath against these people. So Barak, son of Neriah, did exactly what the prophet Jeremiah had told him to do. He read what the Lord had said from the scroll in the temple of the Lord. All the people living in Jerusalem and all the people who came into Jerusalem from the towns of Judah came to observe a fast before the Lord. The fast took place in the ninth month of the fifth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was ruling over Judah. At that time, Barak went into the temple of the Lord. He stood in the entrance of the room of Gamaria, the son of Shaphan, who had been the royal secretary. That room was in the upper court, near the entrance of the new gate. There, where all the people could hear him, he read from the scroll what Jeremiah had said. Micaiah, who was the son of Gamariah and the grandson of Shaphan, heard Barak read from the scroll everything the Lord had said. He went down to the chamber of the royal secretary in the king's palace and found all the court officials in session there. Elishama, the royal secretary, Deleah, son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, son of Akbar, Gamariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials were seated there. Micaiah told them everything he had heard Barak read from the scroll in the hearing of the people. All of the officials sent Jehudai, who was the son of Nathaniah, and the grandson of Cushai, to Barak. They ordered him to tell Barak, Come here and bring with you the scroll you read in the hearing of the people. So Barak, son of Neriah, went to them, carrying the scroll in his hand. They said to him, Please sit down and read it to us. So Barak sat down and read it to them. When they had heard it all, they expressed their alarm to one another. Then they said to Barak, We must certainly give the king a report about everything you have read. Then they said to Barak, How did you come to write all these words? Do they actually come from Jeremiah's mouth? Barak answered, Yes, they came from his own mouth. He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them down in ink on this scroll. Then the official said to Barak, You and Jeremiah must go and hide. You must not let anyone know where you are. The officials put the scroll in the room of Elishama, the royal secretary, for safekeeping. Then they went to the court and reported everything to the king. The king sent Jehudai to get the scroll. He went and got it from the room of Elishama, the royal secretary. Then he himself read it to the king and all the officials who were standing around him. Since it was the ninth month of the year, the king was sitting in his winter quarters. A fire was burning in the fire pot in front of him. As soon as Jehudai had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king would cut them off with a penknife and throw them on the fire in the fire pot. He kept doing so until the whole scroll was burned up in the fire. Neither he nor any of his attendants showed any alarm when they heard all that had been read. 
nor did they tear their clothes to show any grief or sorrow. The king did not even listen to Elnathan, Delea, and Gamaria, who had urged him not to burn the scroll. He also ordered Jeramiel, who was one of the royal princes, Sareah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdiel, to arrest the scribe Barak and the prophet Jeremiah. However, the Lord hid them. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah after Jehoiakim had burned the scroll containing what Jeremiah had spoken and Barak had written down. Get another scroll and write on it everything that was written on the original scroll that King Jehoiakim of Judah burned. Tell King Jehoiakim of Judah, the Lord says, you burn the scroll. You ask Jeremiah, how dare you write in the scroll that the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and wipe out all the people and animals on it. So the Lord says concerning King Jehoiakim of Judah, none of his line will occupy the throne of David. His dead body will be thrown out to be exposed to scorching heat by day and frost by night. I will punish him and his descendants and the officials who serve him for the wicked things they have done. I will bring on them the citizens of Jerusalem and the people of Judah, all the disaster that I threatened to do to them. I will punish them because I threatened them, but they still paid no heed. Then Jeremiah got another scroll and gave it to the scribe Barak son of Neriah. As Jeremiah dictated, Barak wrote on this scroll everything that had been on the scroll that King Jehoiakim of Judah burned in the fire. They also added on the scroll several other messages of the same kind. Zedekiah, son of Josiah, succeeded Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, as king. He was elevated to the throne of the land of Judah by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Neither he nor the officials who served him nor the people of Judah paid any attention to what the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah. King Zedekiah sent Jehuchal, son of Shelemiah, and the priest Zephaniah, son of Maaseah, to the prophet Jeremiah. He told them to say, Please pray to the Lord our God on our behalf. Now Jeremiah had not yet been put in prison, so he was still free to come and go among the people as he pleased. At that time, the Babylonian forces had temporarily given up their siege against Jerusalem. They had had it under siege, but withdrew when they heard that the army of Pharaoh had set out from Egypt. The Lord gave the prophet Jeremiah a message for them. He told them to tell them, The Lord God of Israel says, Give a message to the king of Judah, who sent you to ask me to help him. Tell him the army of Pharaoh that was on its way to help you will go back home to Egypt. Then the Babylonian forces will return. They will attack the city and will capture it and burn it down. Moreover, I, the Lord, warn you not to deceive yourselves into thinking that the Babylonian forces will go away and leave you alone, for they will not go away. For even if you were to defeat all the Babylonian forces fighting against you so badly that only wounded men were left lying in their tents, they would get up and burn the city down. The following events also occurred while the Babylonian forces had temporarily withdrawn from Jerusalem because the army of Pharaoh was coming. Jeremiah started to leave Jerusalem to go to the territory of Benjamin. He wanted to make sure he got his share of the property that was being divided up among his family there but he only got as far as the Benjamin gate. There an officer in charge of the guards named Irijah, who was the son of Shelemiah and the grandson of Hananiah stopped him. He seized Jeremiah and said, you are deserting to the Babylonians. Jeremiah answered, that's a lie. I am not deserting to the Babylonians, but Irijah would not listen to him. Irijah put Jeremiah under arrest and took him to the officials. The officials were very angry at Jeremiah. They had him flogged and put in prison in the house of Jonathan, the royal secretary, which they had converted into a place for confining prisoners. So Jeremiah was put in a prison in a cell in the dungeon in Jonathan's house. 
He was kept there for a long time. Then King Zedekiah had him brought to the palace. There he questioned him privately and asked him, Is there any message from the Lord? Jeremiah answered, Yes, there is. Then he announced, You will be handed over to the king of Babylon. Then Jeremiah asked King Zedekiah, What crime have I committed against you or the officials who serve you or the people of Judah? What have I done to make you people throw me into prison? Where now are the prophets who prophesied to you that the king of Babylon would not attack you or this land? But now please listen, your royal majesty, and grant my plea for mercy. Do not send me back to the house of Jonathan, the royal secretary. If you do, I will die there. Then King Zedekiah ordered that Jeremiah be committed to the courtyard of the guardhouse. He also ordered that a loaf of bread be given to him every day from the baker's street until all the bread in the city was gone. So Jeremiah was kept in the courtyard of the guardhouse. God, when I read this part of the story of Jeremiah with King Jehoiakim, believing that if he throws what Jehoiakim's saying, well, Barak, who's reading that, if he throws it into the fire, it just isn't true. It just won't happen. It just goes away. And we know uh, King Jehoiakim is about 30 years old at this time. Um, so kind of old enough to know better. Uh, we can definitely give him that. And I, I always laugh at this part that he thinks just throwing it into the fire will just burn it up and it just won't be. Um, but I probably shouldn't be laughing because we do the same thing with your word. Uh, we believe if we don't take the Bible off of the shelf and read it, then we don't have to work on anything. Then we don't have to work on a relationship with you. We don't have to work on our relationship with other Christians. We don't have to tell non-Christians about you. If we don't listen to your word, if we don't read your word, then because it's not there in our life, then we don't have to do it. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> And I learned a, a long time ago that when you want me to do something, it is just so much smarter to just agree to do it the first go around when I finally realize what you want from me than it is to try and um, tear it up into pieces and throw it into the fire. Because just like on some science fiction movie, uh, whatever I'm trying to throw into the fire to get rid of will just come right back into my life as though it had never been ripped to shreds. And this can be with reconciliation and relationships. This can be with the forgiveness in those same relationships. Those can be with something I need to work on in myself, uh, such as ego or financial or a variety of other gods that I put in my life. Um, but it's always, it's always a little bit humorous to me that no matter how small and tiny I rip up those pieces and throw them away, um, you somehow seem to bring them back into my life. Uh, and it speaks volumes for how much you love and care about me. That these are important things to me. They are the best things for me. Uh, and that you want the best things in this life for me. And for some silly reason, I don't. <laughs> for some silly reason, I keep trying to choose the world over choose this uh, glorious life that you have planned out for me. I don't know if I'll ever figure out that disconnect, God, but... I do come before you today and, and ask that you continue to help my heart to seek you. That uh, again today we work together and you help guide my steps. That those steps are your will and your plan for my life. And God, I just ask that you continue to work on my heart. I don't know why I keep choosing the not good stuff of this world. Part of it is I think I believe that I deserve those things. And I know you and I are working on that. But the other part has to do with faith and trust in you. And, you know, I believe I have that, but obviously I don't if I still keep choosing what the world says that they're going to offer me over what you have planned for me, which I know is so much better than anything that the world can come up with. But yet I still keep choosing not only second best, but probably second to last best on the list. God, allow my faith and trust in, in your plan for my life to grow. Allow my security uh, in this relationship with you to grow. Uh, allow my belief system in your sovereignty and your plan for my life to grow.
God, continue to guide my feet today in your will. In your son's name I pray. Amen.